morning, afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Um, you know, you guys, I really do think that um, racism, the schism part, the ability to have the power and control over someone based on color is demonic and it's mentally ill. So anybody that participates in that type of mindset, for me, is mentally ill. Now, the sad part about it is you will be hard-pressed to get the people that suffer from that mindset to agree with that because they've been driven by a society where it's been in their best interest. They've been trained and taught to believe um, that they are superior and everyone else is inferior. And what a mind, what a reality check, what a, it, it, you know, what a, a mind screw it would be to have to really sit down and know the truth, know history, um, and to challenge the lies and the power structure of really not only America, but the entire world. But you know, more specifically America, because it was the only, it was a country that was built and founded on race. And I'm starting right here because a lot of people are shocked. I don't see how. Um, with what's going on with the royal family, you know, royalty, social class could not shield Megan from racism in Britain. I'm like. How did you think it would? That's, but that's not where we want to go. I want to share this article with you, and it was written by Rachel Halzapinganos. Um, and it's 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 um an article she wrote about it's in the Washington Post about Megan and Harry. Megan, I'm sorry, yeah, Megan and Harry. Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, shook the British monarch by announcing that they would be stepping back from their royal duties. It came after years of news media coverage that was at times blatantly racist and at other times subtle. Still, it was more critical in tone than the coverage of her counterpart, Kate the Duchess of Cambridge. While some white Britons insisted that race was not a major factor in the coverage, arguing that British society generally is not as racist as the United States. Supporters of the couple, however, have blamed racism not only from the news media, but even from the members of the royal family for pushing Meghan and Harry to put some distance between themselves and the House of Windsor. The couple planned to split their time between England and North America. The Duchess left Britain on January 10th and has been staying in Canada with the couple's infant son, Archie. Beyond being an entertaining story about palace intrigue, the events surrounding the couple's raised questions about race and class, both in Britain and in the United States. Former President Barack Obama, the nation's first um, African-American chief executive, and his family also were subjected to rhetor racist rhetoric. Although the U.S. press generally did not overt, did not use overt racist language and images when covering the president and his wife and his two daughters, racist comments and images directed at the Obamas frequently appeared on social media, and some elected officials, entertainers, and other personalities made racist jokes and statements about the former president and the first lady, and his family, rather. 
Now, about U.S. with social uh, about us spoke with sociologist Jennifer Sims, an assistant professor at the University of Alabama in Huntsville, who has studied how mixed race people are perceived in Britain and in the United States. As part of her research, in a comparing the past, present, and future, she interviewed 30 mixed race individuals in the United States and in Britain. Her research suggests that although there are differences in how people of color, including mixed and race individuals, experience racism in the two countries, Britain is not the haven that some try to make it out to be. This interview has been edited for length and clarity. When Meghan and Harry first started dating, some TV commentators argued that Britain is a class-based society rather than one that categorizes people based on race. Is that something that is true based on your research? It's not untrue that class has a disproportionate impact on how people in the UK are viewed and treated on their life's chances. However, race is not unimportant in the United Kingdom. Another thing that one often hears about in the UK is that they have less of a one-drop rule. The one-drop rule is an archaic argument that is held that a white person with any trace of African American ancestry is considered black. Which is so freaking stupid. I mean, just think about that. And the former slave master was down there raping and impregnating black women that they said weren't human. Okay, wait, let's, I'm sorry, I've digressed. Uh, people who are mixed race, such as Meghan Markle, who are part black, part white, have m- more freedom to identify the way they want and not be subjected to racism and anti-blackness the way mixed race people such as Obama or Halle Berry here in the United States are. And what I found in my research is that while there is less of a one-drop rule in the United Kingdom, it is not, it's not that there are uh, no one-drop rule and anti-blackness in the United Kingdom. Uh, A number of my black, white, mixed race respondents that I interviewed brought up being treated just like Megan, who is being subjected to stereotypes that go along with being black. When they first were dating Harry and Megan, I remember one UK paper said his girlfriend is straight out of Compton or something of that nature. And then, of course, when Archie was born and was leaving the hospital, a former BBC reporter tweeted a picture of a monkey and a well-dressed man and a woman. It's not that racism doesn't exist for a mixed-race couple there. It is true that class is a big divider in the United Kingdom, but race is not irrelevant there, so don't think that it is. How did this notion that race isn't an issue Uh, in Britain come to be. I think because the United States and the way we have totally historically had racism has become the standard. It's misunderstood. It's understood. Oh, there was chattel slavery and then there was Jim Crow. We had lynching. We had to have civil rights movement in this country. Another issue is when we compare the treatment of black Americans in general. Take the issue of police violence. Cases such as Trayvon Martin or Tamir Rice and Mike Brown, all of these cases are here in the United States. But there are a few in the United Kingdom as well. But there are not as many police brutality and vigilante violence against black people in the UK as in the United States. So people assume, oh well, that's not as bad as the United States. But as one of my interviewee said, why does death have to be the standard for something to be bad? 
I mean, think about that. Why does death have to be the standard for something to be bad? Can it be bad without you literally having to be killed? How do you think Megan's treatment in the UK compares to how Obama and his family were viewed in the United States? Oh boy, there's a lot of similarities. But also, I think that gender makes a difference as well. I feel like a lot of the backlash against Megan has been about physical things she does. Cupping her baby bump as a cry, even though it's seen as tender when Kate does it. So much of what has been uh, about what she does, what she's looking like, what she's wearing. With Obama, there was some of that. There was a whole tan suit incident. But I feel like Michelle got more of the, oh, you're showing your arms and the focus of what she wears. So, I feel... The worst part about it, but you got a president now who's got a wife that's a whore, and that's okay. <laughs> See what I mean by mental illness? Oh, you're showing your arms. So I feel like there is a gender difference in how they are treated, which just really shows you how race is gendered. But the bottom line is that both of them, both Megan and Obama, are being held to a different and a harsher, more unfair standard than their white counterparts. With Obama, it's different because you can only speculate that if a white president had done X, Y, and Z, it would be okay. But it's obviously speculation in form, but still speculation. Uh, do you think that any black president, there's only been one, or, okay, of, as in recent history, can get away with Donald Trump was what Donald Trump is doing? Do you think any Mitch McConnell or Moscow, uh, yeah, Mitch McConnell or Lindsey Graham, you think any of them would be so steadfast to protect a black uh, president? Didn't, uh, O'Con uh, what was it, Mitch tell him, uh, we gonna make you a one-term president? I mean, okay. Uh, you know, it's obvious speculation in form, but still speculation. With Megan, there's a direct comparison to Kate to be able to show that this newspaper said X about Megan, but they said Y about Kate. And so you can see how race really does make a difference. But the bottom line for both of them is really just does underscore that even if you adhere to all the standards that Western society say you should, you should be beautiful and talented and smart. You should be achieving high in your field because you are black or African descent. This weighted history of anti-blackness in both countries will come crashing down on you and hold you to your to different standards that treat you more negatively. Harry has made attempts to shield Megan from some of the treatment that she's been getting. Why has he not been able to be successful doing that? Well, I think there are two reasons. The first, I think, is the sheer weight and the strength of anti-blackness that exists in both countries. So you think this one young man is going to be able to cure it all? How stupid was that? He is one man going up against hundreds of years of ideology and negativity. One defamation lawsuit is not going to change an institution such as the media that has for hundreds of years been so anti-black and just insidiously hard on people of African descent in general. The second reason I think he's been unsuccessful is that there is a pushback against white men who, for lack of a better word, do right by mixed race women or treat their wives of African descent as equals and expect others to treat them as equals. What's some insecure, emotionally weak, projecting behavior? I mean, I think the whole mindset behind the race construct had to be developed by insecure, weak cowards. Mentally ill. 
Cause, and to make the whole world adhere to the mental the madness. It's, it's, it's mind blowing. Um, as long as you don't take that next step in legally marrying her, if she was your equal, then it's accepted throughout U.S. history for a white man to have a black mixed race woman whom they are sleeping with. But that next to say, I love you, I'm going to marry you, I'm going to protect you and our children. Now, that's a step that literally led to Loving versus Virginia case. Despite white men throughout history sleeping with, raping black mixed race women. Uh, listen to the mental illness of this, God. When white men take that step, either in fiction or in real life, to say, I love you, I want to marry you, I want to protect you and, ch and the children, society pushes back hard. Very, very hard. And I feel like Harry is the most recent in that string of white men that have come up against this kind of treatment. You know, um, well, an earlier version of this story incorrectly identifies sociologist Jennifer Sims as an associate professor at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. She is an, she is an assistant professor. What y'all think about that article? I mean, do y'all really, really think that it's uh, racism or... Prejudice. Well, I, I don't even want to say prejudice because all, all, all human beings have a certain amount of prejudice. But do y'all think that racism is different in the in, uh, UK and that it's better or it's not as bad? And um, Tell me what you think about that. How does it shape up in your world? And when you talk about Great Britain, the UK, uh, and when you talk about America, or do you... Do you see them as really that separate, or do you see it all as one big piece? You know, I do. Personally, I see it as they broke off from her, the queen. Insecure, arrogant, pompous, projected, mentally ill men, white men, have started this country. And um, racism is a cancer that is spread throughout the diaspora. But I still contend that it's mental illness. Your racist thoughts, your racist construct, I mean, in concept of where people should be, is really mentally ill. And you should check the origins of it. I mean, hey, if you disagree, let me know. Put it down there. I'm willing to listen. All right? And um, I'll see you in the next video. So if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much.